When it comes to protecting you and your family from violence or crime, law enforcement is gaining an edge. It's called predictive policing. WNCN's Mike Lamia explains how it's making a difference. Okay, Jad, what's coming? Double homicide, one male, one female. Killers male, white, 40s. On the silver screen, it almost seems like a reality. 40. Set up a perimeter and tell them on roof. In the movie Minority Report, Tom Cruise plays a Washington, D.C. detective who uses a precognitive system to stop crime before it even occurs. I'm placing you under arrest for the future murder of Sarah Marks. And although predicting crime may seem futuristic... Looks like single-family homes in a specific area. The reality may be closer than you think. Hollywood kind of dramatizes what is possible. Jason Sheets is in charge of separating the fiction from fact for the Durham Police Department. He coordinates the Crime Analysis Unit and Crime Intelligence Unit in the department. Basically, the men and women who predict crime. They are looking at weekly crime trends to see where those crimes are happening whether there's any pattern to those crimes to indicate that the same person or individuals may be involved. Law enforcement in our area uses several programs to diligently mine data from officer reports and other materials to create usable information that can identify trends in crime. Crime doesn't occur, you know, evenly over the course of time. Mm -hmm. As weather changes, as the amount of daylight in the day changes, you can see kind of fluctuations with crime. It's generating the crime intensity areas. Our intensity areas here are the ones in, in red. Detailed maps with heat signatures can also paint a picture for analysts like Elise Pierce at the Cary Police Department. I would say it saves them a tremendous amount of time because instead of doing maybe random patrols, we're telling them where the focus areas need to be. Department supervisors hope that targeted patrols turn into results. There's a um, more of a clustering in the month of May of crimes where it decreases in the month of June. Is that an example of this program working? Yes. We don't have as many cops as we want out there patrolling. Our, our job is to help those officers be very fluid so that they can quickly move from one type of a problem to another. So the data you mine today could go into effect tomorrow? Absolutely. The data crime analysts gather will eventually be turned into useful information for the boots on the ground. And that information can turn a city into a digital world, allowing officers to essentially predict crime. Quite a bit of problems with the shootings back and forth in this area and we've been able to curve some of that with the operations that have been going on. Lieutenant Marianne Bond is an assistant commander for the Durham Police Department. She acts as the link between the analysts who crunch the numbers and the officers out on patrol. There was some gang activity and some retaliatory shootings going on. Um, utilizing that information, we were able to identify vast majority of the players. Absolutely, that's success. Utilizing those tools you were just mentioning to very, very specifically predict not who, but when and where that person would strike next, and it worked. A team effort that involves dozens of moving pieces, limitless data, and cutting-edge technology that can almost seem futuristic. If you contain information, I need to know how to get at it. As we continue to not only have better tools, but better experienced and trained analysts in order to decipher that information, then we'll be able to reduce crime by not only catching the individuals, but catching them sooner. And that was Mike Lamier reporting. The city of Durham launched Operation Bullseye seven years ago, and since then, violent crime has dropped 39 percent. Violent gun crime plunged 46 percent, and prostitution is down by nearly two-thirds.